Uh, hello, uh, my name is uh, Mohamed Khalil. I am a PhD candidate in the Graduate University of Technology. Um, I got my bachelor uh, and uh, my master's degree in computer science and information security. Uh, currently, my PhD studies uh, generally focuses on uh, educational technology and technology enhanced learning. Uh, but uh, we are uh, focusing on uh, now on um, uh, a term called learning analytics uh, and massive open online courses. Uh, and uh, this is all supervised by Dr. Martin Ebner. Uh, we are also uh, studying the big data, the advantages and disadvantages on, uh, on all stakeholders, learners, institutions and also the teachers. The potential for uh, data and uh, big data to change uh, the life and uh, especially in education is uh, too much and too large. But uh, the main question that we are asking here is uh, who owns the data? Uh, is it the learners who generate the data or the institutions who own the data? I have read recently that uh, the data uh, now in 2015 uh, currently uh, is 90 percent of all the data in the world, which has been only created in the last two years, which means that uh, with the new technology and uh, w w there are a lot of uh, collection and a lot of uh, generation of data and it is easy uh, by using the new technology. To talk about uh, our statement, um, I would like to define what is learning analytics. Learning analytics is a, a field that uh, has emerged in 2011, and it is defined as the measurement, collection, and analysis and reporting of data about learners, and uh, how it can um, optimize learning environments and learners themselves. Uh, this field uh, has emerged uh, actually because uh, the data now uh, can be generated uh, easily and because uh, the second thing uh, the, the second thing is because of the advancements of uh, computational tools and technology um, the goals for uh, this field was uh, and intended to be is uh, likely uh, can summarize them into four things uh, the first thing is uh, to make predictions uh, and what I mean by predictions is like we can predict the next movement of learners uh, what can they do and what will they do uh, the second thing uh, is the intervention um, through learning analytics we can make interventions by the decision makers is that like uh, for example we can uh, detect the students who will drop out or the students who are at risk therefore uh, we can intervene and make some decisions to stop this the third goal was uh, to make or is uh, is to make um, a feedback and what I mean by a feedback is that with our results and with our analysis we can feedback our results to the learners so that they will increase their performance and the fourth uh, goal is uh, to benchmark the online uh, learning environments uh, or to uh, also uh, to benchmark the, uh, the the courses itself the material itself Uh, for example, about uh, these problems, uh, we have a company in the United States called Class Dujo, and uh, this company mainly uh, analyzes uh, students' information in schools. So uh, there are a lot of course of advantages about analysis of students. They can uh, report who are the students are good or, or who are bad and to uh, correct all these uh, issues. Uh, however, there were complaints by the parents about who owns the data and uh, actually they were also afraid about labeling the students and what we mean by labeling is that uh, in a class uh, using uh, this uh, software or this application by this company is that they were saying that uh, we have this child and he is bad in this class. So the parents were complaining about this and after a lot of negotiations and discussions they come up with a solution of a deletion policy uh, in which they will delete the information of students after one year. Uh, according to my statements and the problem of security and privacy, 
we think that uh, there should be a hybrid approach uh, which uh, will make some equality between uh, who owns the data, the learners and institution. We should define the rules uh, for learners and we should also define the rules for the institutions. Uh, this is the first thing. The second thing is that what we research at TU Kras in our office is also we found that we should do um, a technology uh, called uh, anonymization and de-identification in which the data uh, will be anonymized completely and nobody can know uh, who owns this data or who are the person uh, behind uh, let's say this record or behind this information. Uh, the third solution we can also talk about is uh, to um, uh, to put a new to, a, a new policy, uh, and um, which is like uh, like our example we uh, we already talked about uh, is to make a deletion policy. Like after one year or after the course finish uh, finishes, we can make a deletion policy. And uh, the fourth uh, solution also is that we should uh, protect the data that we have in our database by using uh, cryptography uh, and uh, to uh, increase the uh, authentication and restrictions uh, rules. As we talked about, uh, this field actually has uh, advantages. And the advantages, uh, as I told you, is to optimize learning environments and to optimize what the learners can do. Uh, but however, as, it, uh, as I already uh, talked about, is that uh, there is no field in the world with, with only advantages. So the disadvantages is the problem of security and ethics. And uh, we uh, propose some solutions with using um, a deletion policy, anonymization, or, or also um, uh, encryption in, for, for the data. But uh, for, for using actually the security, we can say that we are uh, assuring um, uh, a concept which is transparency and the transparency actually is something is uh, everybody love because uh, the learners themselves they can know uh, what uh, what are the rights what they can do and what they can do and uh, on the other hand with institutions or schools or universities of course uh, this will limit their uh, what they can do with the data because actually uh, as we uh, as we said is that they should make some equality between the between the rights of learners and the rights uh, of institutions uh, uh, the disadvantages, uh, um, the, the, there is a disadvantage, a, a big one for learning analytics is that uh, sometimes the prediction or intervention is wrong. Therefore, uh, there will be a wrong or mistaken decisions. And in, in this case, what can happen? Uh, what will uh, the learners do if they knew that the decision from the institution is wrong or mistaken. And this uh, actually um, uh, could happen with any data analytics approach. And in our case, we are talking about education and society and using the big data. And this, of course, can make some problems. And uh, of course, there are m many examples uh, about this, such as the labeling problem from the company Class Dujo. The other uh, disadvantages we can talk is not security is not always the solution because actually too much restrictions and uh, uh, privacy, this will make the data uh, analytics uh, limited. Uh, big data has um, a, a huge uh, potential behind it and a bright future, especially uh, by using machine learning and data mining. We can predict the unpredictable, uh, especially in fields such as education. Uh, however, we cannot deny the importance of data privacy. Uh, the nightmare uh, could be when we can do uh, anything uh, with the big data because of too much restrictions because of the privacy and a lot of rules and laws in security and uh, and personal information. Uh, therefore, it is uh, really bad uh, to see that uh, more advancements in technologies, but we can do nothing about it because of restrictions and limitations uh, of rules and data privacy. We should believe that uh, with more technological tools, there will be um, privacy violations. Uh, however, uh, we wish uh, that there will be a threshold between two sides. The first side is with big data technology and analysis and the other side to respect uh, personal information and privacy.